Hello everybody, this is Bifa Belarus program on Primus Radio and this time uh, the major theme we are going to cover is Belarus as ecological danger zone. We cover this theme with Vlad Baranich. Vlad, hello. Hello. Vlad is a country consultant and media analyst and uh, the reason we are going to cover this topic is as follows. First of all, it's, it's not just one, but primarily Minsk uh, faced a unique uh, water disaster yes. when about 800,000 thousand people were deprived of clean uh, safe water supply and in this uh, context we have another ecological bomb in the form of battery plant in Brest we have Sitlagorsk plant um, that produces pulp and uh, paper, we have uh, cement plants, we have another biological potential danger zone with 14 uh, plants that are going to make acids uh, by biological technological plant with dubious ownership. So that's why we are going to discuss this issue in the context of the, of the following uh, proposition, that the government is an important to neutralize uh, different market failures, including ecology. So, how do you view uh, environmental performance in Belarus? Uh, I just look, uh, looked at the Environmental Performance Index 2020 made by Yale University, and Belarus ranks 49th in the world out of 180 countries, which seems to be not that bad. Well, that's, uh, I guess they don't include a lot of uh, <laughs> factors. factors. Uh, you know, uh, the thing is with ecology in Belarus, mm -hmm. you know, I've been always talking to, you know, when I was consulting about the country, I was warning every time. The main uh, problem in Belarus is ecology. It is not visible, as as you can see it, just uh, mm -hmm. evidently, because there is a lightning rod like uh, nu uh, this nuclear Chernobyl mm -hmm. disaster. Mm -hmm. Well, there are contaminated areas, here is okay, but the rest is, seems fine. Mm -hmm. And there is, you know, uh, traditional propaganda, state-based mm -hmm. uh, propaganda, I would mm -hmm. say, that uh, Belarus is the country of uh, lakes, forests, etc., but you know everything is contaminated uh, by water, air, because uh, on every level, on, on mm -hmm. state level, and most, or most important, I would say, on popular level, there is mm -hmm. total, um, total ecological ignorance, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, people just uh, they just ignore everything. I mean, basic things which like uh, unimaginable in in a civilized country so you are talking about household behavior right. vis -vis the environment it you know it, it goes it begins from house, households mm -hmm. and goes to to you know on, on, on state level because if you for example um, uh, the, when I say for example if you mm -hmm. want to live somewhere in, in a residential area and consult mm -hmm. about uh, choosing proper place uh, you know where to get apartment mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. house house uh, for rent. Just uh, you just don't go there where the so-called private mm -hmm. sector, mm -hmm. where this uh, the remnants of uh, old Minsk with uh, these uh, you know one-store buildings or with people with their own property because they burn junk there. You mm -hmm. know, burn plastic, they burn uh, whatever. I mean, just mm -hmm. open uh, fire, or it can be just in in a furnace mm -hmm. or somewhere, mm -hmm. just like like a fuel. And they don't realize that it's so dangerous. And but uh, you can you compare us with uh, the countries you know, United States, Germany, of France. Course, yes, but Europe, uh, I mean, like like Poland. Yeah, that's right. But unimaginable. Look at uh, the scores, right? Uh, let's like you have environmental health. Its uh, rank of Belarus in 2020 index is 48th, right? Air quality is 57th. Sanitation drinking water 52nd, heavy metals uh, 67th, the worst we get is ecosystem services 120, which is like administration, which is not that bad. So if you look at that, uh, compared to uh, countries of the European Union, a lot of uh, cash pumped into ecology and the environmental performance, it's one thing, but uh, compared to uh, Russia, compared to Ukraine, compared to uh, Asian countries, Belarus's rank is not that bad. 
That's fair. You know, it, probably uh, the total number uh, is Poland uh, ranks thirty-seventh. Comes out from you know from uh, <laughs> there is certain uh, level of uh, strict regulations on for factories, uh -huh, for example, uh -huh. for something owned by um, you know businesses, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. etc. But I, I say I talk about the uh, this total awareness on the popular level. Mm -hmm, People mm -hmm. just burn junk on their. But they're yards. punished. They're fined for that for no, this kind of behavior. No, no, no they don't. If they're uh, caught. For example, no, no, no. You know, uh, I, you know, I, I, when, when I, you know, I've been mm -hmm. covering this, uh, writing for mm -hmm. as, as a journalist in back in uh, 2012, mm -hmm. uh, was writing for EU uh, propaganda bulletin. It's called Euro mm -hmm. bulletin, mm -hmm. and th there was you know big program here about environmental mm -hmm. uh, with mm -hmm. EU f sponsored. Uh, it's about it was about recycling uh, garbage, mm -hmm. etc. Mm -hmm. And I was asking you know, these bureaucrats from this uh, Ministry of Environmental mm -hmm. Protection mm -hmm. and uh, Natural Resources, something like that. And I asked them about this mm -hmm. burning stuff, mm -hmm. burning uh, junk. Looting air, in a way, right? Uh, well, but by the way, they don't punish people. And they say, well, President has allowed this. And <laughs> this is truly. In uh, 2012, there was, uh, before that, we had mm -hmm. law which, like, uh, f f forbade burning uh, fire, even even just a wood, on, uh, mm -hmm. on, uh, openly In on the, the yard. Mm -hmm. And uh, our fire department was fighting for this. And people were buying shredders for for say you know branches of trees when mm -hmm, they mm -hmm. cut them prune mm -hmm. and uh, and after that you know somebody complained to the president mm -hmm. uh, and that they can't burn it he said there is a video mm -hmm. uh, available about that if you look for mm -hmm. on, on YouTube and he said why do you not allow people to burn those sticks or you know those branches <laughs> and you know he said just ordered uh, this ministry of mm -hmm. for, uh, how it's called the emergency, emergency situations mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, just to control this to you know, supervise this burn a bit allowed, but nobody supervises they just say oh, president is allowed and I mm -hmm. guess they just remove Moved that uh, that thing from uh, that I don't know statement in the Stand, law mm -hmm, or mm -hmm. I don't proposition know. in the law, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know what was just did not dig deep into this question, but mm -hmm. when I know because I'm, mm -hmm. I'm quite quite often uh, called to to this uh, fire department mm -hmm. and say there is a burning fire with the smoke, heavy mm -hmm. smoke of you know some rubber or mm -hmm. plastic, even worse. And they say, well, uh, they go there, and then they call me back and say, well, from our point of view, there is mm -hmm. no violation. Mm -hmm. And currently, I, for example, uh, there is, uh, I'm, I'm in the process of mm -hmm. um, saying writing, writing uh, petition, the petitions, just uh, asking questions from authorities of mm -hmm. city authorities. There is some uh, some enterprise with probably I don't know what they do there. Mm -hmm. They there is some. Uh, some construction site or whatever mm -hmm. they burn there is you know uh, a chimney, chimney not big you know just like uh, three meters only and it's uh, 20 meters from the living uh, from the house you know the apartment house and uh, there is a school 50 meters from the to, uh, 100 meters for my apartment mm -hmm. and there is heavy smoke bird from this chimney mm -hmm. going into you know windows of people mm -hmm. and they called many uh, you know those uh, governmental mm -hmm. officials you know asking why is this going on and like a minister of, for, uh, of, uh, of uh, natural resources and environment they mm -hmm. say well from our point of view it might be not a violation so mm -hmm. call to this uh, sanitary station what is called this mm -hmm. uh, minister of health who health. are uh, the special this branch are they are they supervise this uh, sanitary and you know, condition of mm -hmm. air, etc. 
and that's amazing and uh, it is in the center of means just you know they burn that stuff and well um, I, I can't <laughs> imagine this even in Poland I mean uh, in, uh, in in Czech Republic and in the center of Prague it would be unimaginable no, it's, uh, I think that the, um, there are certain uh, cultural differences uh, between uh, Belarus and Poland but if you look at the um, region and uh, Yale University defines us as former Soviet states region and Belarus ranks number one out of all Soviet former Soviet Union states 49th uh, Ukraine 60th Russia 58th Kazakhstan 85th so uh, it's not that bad but again uh, how can you explain let's comment on two uh, three ecological disasters that are happening right now. First is a uh, battery plant in Brest, which uh, Brest people have been have been striking against that, uh, uh, have, or holding walkouts, and uh, they prove that ecological standards were violated, and uh, the discrepancy between what is on paper and what is reality is like hundreds of times. Second disaster is water disaster, and it just recently happened, and again, during one day uh, the water supply company said that uh, it's safe to drink water though it smelled like rat, it, it burnt uh, people it caused uh, yes. allergies and third case is again the Lagorsk pulp plant which was built with Chinese equipment, Chinese uh, labor and it's it was supposed to be in operation from 12, 2015 it's still in under construction and again, uh, the residential area around this plant, they suffered a lot. They wrote papers and people who are responsible for keeping environmental standards wrote back saying, oh, we have normal standard uh, norms of pollution. There's no, uh, there are no reasons for us to close down these, these, uh, um, these kind of, you know, subjects, these plants. So how do you comment on these three areas? How uh, efficient, how um, timely and responsible the reaction of the authorities was of where uh, and uh, whether people uh, realized that in order to uh, keep to high standards of environmental performance they must have a better and more uh, important stake on uh, decision making in the country well if we talk about these cases it's where uh, state enterprises involved they mm -hmm. they totally i mean totally but they like to ignore mm -hmm. uh, these ecological standards and they like to spare money on those cleaning on mm -hmm. these filters and etc uh, so uh, i i just uh, with uh, you know this pulp uh, mm -hmm. factory or this battery factory, mm -hmm. certainly there shall be very strict regulations and very strict mm -hmm. uh, protection uh, facilities. Mm -hmm. I mean filters, probably I don't know what if the, because certainly there is polluted water which is being dumped mm -hmm. into the ground yep. or just in nearby. Uh, water reservoirs or for example like a river so no, nothing strange that happened with with water supply in Minsk and uh, for example I have my own uh, example and uh, long let's say a long history of um, well observation mm -hmm. I tried to do something but I couldn't because it's a problem for example there is there is um, uh, there is um, say uh, so settle in this area uh, in, in this industrial area uh, on uh, south of Minsk it's called Gatava Gatava mm -hmm. yes and nearby Shabani uh, where we have this sewage system where industrial those, part yes, of Minsk yeah and uh, this Gatava there is uh, leather factory mm -hmm. and it was built in nine 1987, something like that. I remember By it was the project announced with the participation of Italian yes. investors. Well, Italians built it, but uh, as for those uh, cleaning facilities, mm -hmm. uh, our authorities and Soviet mm -hmm. authorities say, well, we'll build, uh, build our own. And so they built nothing. Mm -hmm. So there is a horrible stench there. <laughs> and But stench, you know, is, is, is nothing to comparison with the 
nearby, which is close, just yep. uh, behind the fence, there is a processing factory. Uh, it's called the well, the process. It's um, recycling mm-hmm. of aluminium. Mm-hmm. And other uh, other metals like aluminium, but most aluminium. Mm-hmm. And uh, there is chimney maybe ten meters high, and when when they melt it, mm-hmm. uh, they sort of recycle it, and it just just goes and goes like in a nearby dacha where my dacha is. Mm-hmm. It is terrible, you know. There is this uh, black smoke goes out there, and they called you know authorities. Mm-hmm. We, we visited that. I was there. They showed me all this what is inside. I thought mm-hmm. they burn plastic. No, they say they don't burn plastic, but uh, you know this uh, this. Um, uh, metal for recycling. Mm-hmm. This um, mostly they, you know, they they melt it mm-hmm. like um, like military old military APC. You mm-hmm. know, they they made from this uh, alloy of, of oh, aluminium, mm-hmm. and so there is a. They covered, you know, there is oil and there is uh, certainly there is paint on the everything is burned so out. Chemical into, substances yes. being burned. And well, they said, I mean, those uh, ecological authorities said, well, since no plastic is involved, mm-hmm. when, when of course they 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 take old mm-hmm. wires, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. they have special equipment mm-hmm. which mm-hmm. cleans it from uh, plastic. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, and they, they, according to this process, uh, industrial mm-hmm. process, they can't. I use plastic because it will pollute their melting uh, pot, and uh, so it's bad mm-hmm. for them. But uh, for this, as, as you know, environmental authorities said, well, for burning substances, that's mm-hmm. okay for them to go into air without being filtered. Mm-hmm. So that's one of the examples which I have every mm-hmm. day. Mm-hmm. And um, as for water, it's even worse. There is uh, the, there is area uh, they, they call it natural filtering. There is uh, those are called open air water uh, reservoirs. Not reservoirs. No? There is a different thing. There is a, you know there is a place they can. Uh, sometimes they take people there and show them what they do there. Mm-hmm. Uh, there is like a place in the in the forest, mm-hmm. and there are kind of ponds. Mm-hmm. And they, they just dump sewage from uh, septic tanks. Mm-hmm. You know, those mm-hmm. special, uh, how they call these mm-hmm. cars, not cars, these, not cars, so those trucks uh, with um, mm-hmm. tanks go there and uh, they dump this stuff there. And they say, well, it, 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 it gradually seeps through the ground mm-hmm. and then naturally, natural bacteria, so mm-hmm. they somehow develop them into mm-hmm. something benign. Mm-hmm. So uh, they don't like, you know, uh, actually that place is mm-hmm. not allowed to take this, uh, this sewerage mm-hmm. stuff mm-hmm. from you know, private septic tanks. But, you know, these guys who are, you know, probably, let's say, they do this on their own time. The, 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 there are those uh, those vehicles, uh, you know, special specialized vehicles mm-hmm. for which carry those tanks. You know, uh, they stay toned. Okay, but you are yeah. very specific. Let's do not. Yeah, uh, just example of d- go into detail. Yes. but fu- fundamentally, uh, do you believe that the way Belarusian authorities and Belarus preserved state ownership over means of production, everything, eighty percent of uh, production belongs to the government. At the same time, the government is authorized and empowered to preserve environmental standards. People uh, inherited this attitude from the Soviet Union when they, uh, okay, this is not this collective farm, this is state-owned, yes. so we don't give a shit about that because we can pollute. It's not ours. We can keep clean uh, our own backyard, our garden, uh, our house, our apartment, but apart from that, let uh, heaps of uh, rubbish, yes. rat and smell, and it's not our business. And if things g- g- get worse, we will wear masks right. against it. Uh, will things change if we go through privatization? Because, let like, for example, Ukraine and Russia and Kazakhstan, they are much uh, more uh, advanced in terms of some economic reforms. And the private sector is still there. But environmental performance in these countries is, is still worse. 
So what is more important to have a European or say civilized legal system with rule of law, with independence of judiciary, with independent, uh, I would call it environmental police, than uh, uh, than the system we have now? Because right now we have to design something that would work better for us. And our opponents would say, well, Belarus is 49th in the world. It's not that bad. We recognize our problems. But Lukashenko went to Brest and uh, said to the people, yeah, yeah, people will hold a referendum in Brest on uh, the future of this battery plant. He went to Svetlogorsk, uh, talked to people and say, if uh, anybody violated uh, environmental standards, you'll be hanged. You'll be hung yeah. with your head uh, yeah. down. Uh, and so the authorities in this or what, that way, distorted or not, re- recognized the existence of some problems. How can we make the authorities more reportable and managers of state assets more reportable to the people to uh, preserve environmental standards? Because if we go through the formal way, right, okay, we can have whatever laws around, but if without law implementation, law, legal culture, uh, things would stay on paper. Well, as we already said, that if we take uh, state enterprises, mm-hmm. uh, where, where they can spend right away, sp- uh, spare money for, you know, just reduced mm-hmm. costs, mm-hmm. just taking out uh, cleaning fa- facilities, mm-hmm. filters, etc., so dumping stuff into the ground or into the mm-hmm. rivers, uh, whatever, you know, that's understandable. If we take to the if, if, as you say, if we privatize this factory, mm-hmm. well, it nothing, it changes nothing. Even it can be worse because, uh, you know, this private owner he will be even more uh, mm-hmm. aggressive toward mm-hmm. the environment. Like we see, people burn their junk on their yards. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't mean. So there has to be uh, working law mm-hmm. and very strict con- control. Mm-hmm. And certainly here we come into. Uh, into requirement or mm-hmm. just uh, condition, I would say, mm-hmm. um, that there would be checks and balances. Mm-hmm. So here we go to democracy, because yeah. uh, if uh, authorities are not elected, so they're corrupt, or so they, they has. There has to be working law which you know stipulates you can't dump junk there, you can't pollute air, you can't pollute water. Yeah, there is no whiplash to force authorities, yes. to force uh, red directors, to force local authorities to preserve environment. Yes, even to, within their own uh, property. Reverence. If the president allows you know people to burn junk. Yeah plastic on their yard, so why not factories can do this? <laughs> yeah, exactly. In the I mean, they say, well, scale. President allowed that, and yeah. so they, they just, you know, there's some, well, uh, mm-hmm. as example in that uh, um, in that area where she said, the Gatava, uh, there are private sites, you know, mm-hmm. land owned mm-hmm. by people, mm-hmm. and they have small businesses there, and they really burn that plastic instead of utilizing it, mm-hmm. instead of taking it to the garbage uh, site. Mm-hmm. You have to pay for that. That's right. But it's, it's cheaper for them. And what's funny, as I said, there is uh, 50 meters from mm-hmm. where they burn it mm-hmm. with heavy smoke there. There is a fire station. Mm-hmm. And they called, you know, to this fire department. What's going on? We have this one on one and said, well, don't they see from there what was going on there? They say, well, we went there. So the, 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 the mm-hmm. truck, the fire truck with sirens, everything mm-hmm. went mm-hmm. there. <laughs> and then they called me. We found no violation because it's privately owned and they don't violate rules which we have about burning. They don't violate fire uh, safety, safety rules. Errors. As for environment, they said, well, you have to call this Ministry of uh, mm-hmm. Environment. So, <laughs> man, and I called Ministry of Environment and they said we can do nothing because that's fire, really strange, fire department. Really strange, right. And uh, that's, that's what I say from my experience. I have photos, I have videos about that, and it's, I have 
ongoing process mm -hmm. right now in the center of Minsk mm -hmm. the same uh, well, the same magnitude but uh, still the problem is there and uh, with water as mm -hmm. we said about uh, early mentioned about water mm -hmm. uh, disaster it's 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 I mean stupendous you know just what's going on in in the city i mean mm -hmm. like almost no, less than a million people suffered from mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. that's unimaginable in the in 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 uh, in a country which they you know boast in the world is the one of the plentiful with water with lakes with you know these blue lakes they, they call it belarus uh, country blue, blue eyed, blue -eyed uh, belarus no, but having 11000 lakes and uh, 43% of the territory covered with forests yeah. we have uh, the capacity to have our country yes. clean and we have a lot of uh, swamps also which uh, some people call lungs of europe and we have let's uh, it's a, it's a Paradise for bird watchers, in a way, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> for, uh, for for uh, for people. But again. Um so we, we, we have this interesting situation when the government tries to uh, manage the uh, ecological uh, issues we have this Minister of Environmental Perfection and essentially when uh, this breast uh, battery plant was about to be launched uh, Minister of Environment uh, and breast authorities did not let it happen in a way so that surprise surprise they, solid, they cons consolidated with the people rather than with uh, businessmen who somehow, s with sophistication they had with the different tools, managed to provide all the papers, which, as activists showed, were fakes. Well, because there is private, a privately owned factory there. That's easy. So if, if it were uh, state-owned, there wouldn't be even no question at all. Yeah? But now this plant is owned by the guy who is director of a hockey team where Lukashenko plays. Yes, so there's not an average rank and file business. Yes, that's why this question is, I mean, this problem is going on, you know, they can't close mm -hmm. it and they can't open it, they can't allow it and yep. they can't, uh, you know, close it because this guy is influential enough uh -huh. to, to you know, proceed this mm -hmm. and uh, other people, for example, if you take about authorities, they sh certainly have their mansions there and they have their land sites there, somebody lives there, they don't want this as well. So that's, um, that's a question of uh, influence, I would say, who, who is more influential in presidential circles. So, uh, but we don't have, uh, the problem is that there is no working law here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There shall be no, like if you take, uh, for example, Germany, there is very strict law. Yeah, right, but this uh, and exactly. that. So uh, essentially, then boils down not only to what is on paper, but to implementation, to culture, and to uh, rule of law in general. Right. So without, if we do not have rule of law in any other uh, area, like, for example, political area, we don't have rule of law when we talk about the political civil rights. We don't have rule of law in freedom of expression and preserving our uh, status, our right to for free expression. For example, now we have this uh, in this uh, case against the journalists for Yezhidnevnik, right? Yes, yes. The accusation of the authorities is that uh, he should prove that he uh, has the right to call himself a journalist right. in order to have a journalistic investigation, which is like absurd. Right. And in this case, again, so uh, environment is also part of, in order to solve the environmental problems we have, in order to keep our nature clean, uh, primarily we should have rule of law, we should have political competition, we have transparency and, and uh, civic society control over what's going on in the country. And uh, business is not immune uh, from uh, preserve, providing information which is necessary to evaluate environmental uh, standards of protection. Um, yes, certainly. I mean, the law, that's why the state exists. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, we are libertarians, right. we're very, let's say, anti-state, so to say. Uh, or at least... Uh, we realize the, the danger yes. of Leviathan, big I, government. I personally big uh, like this, you know, this law 
of the whose whose gun is longest <laughs> is more right, like right. in the Wild West star approach. You know, there's sheriff, there uh, deputy sheriff, sheriff was elected, elected, by the people, right? Yeah, so but was the no state was involved. There was exactly. sheriff, a local guy, you know, who was cool guy enough. I mean, he he could shoot fast, and there was uh, this you know shooters of <laughs> Wild West, and uh, so I like this approach. But since we people are disarmed, and like in yeah. the United States, yeah. they can't protect themselves. There's a, there is police. So police has to do their job. Mm -hmm. And in this case, like with the environmental authorities, uh, since we don't have this lynch law, mm -hmm. which we can take, for example, and lynch that uh, yeah. polluter, mm -hmm. so there is a Ministry of Environment. They have to do this job. And actually... It must be uh, institutionally independent. Right. Because if a minister can be called by uh, a minister, by prime minister, by president, by uh, uh, force structure head and says, you know, uh, let's go to sauna tonight. So go to sauna, they talk and they decide this issue over beer, over vodka, over something else. And this is, if you don't, do not have checks and balances, that's a problem. Uh, again, there has to be a freedom of press because exactly. uh, those who report about this, who can, you know, inform uh, public, inform people about the problem. Exactly. Media. So media is uh, the only uh, you know, sentinel the people, here. Right. Yeah. Right. So now we have, we have social networks, we have YouTube bloggers, we have many uh, venues to express ourselves. Definitely the environmental issues are very, very important to preserve health and safety of the people. And I think that uh, this is where, where the, the government of the state in general should uh, focus its attention to preserve freedom of expression, to ensure transparency of and accountability of the companies that are involved in some production in order to keep in mind. And if we have, uh, again, this is another one wonderful, uh, very key issue. If we have uh, strict and well-defined property right borders, as Ronald Coe said, then it's much easier for us to litigate to uh, have argument with each other because if you pollute and you uh, depreciate my property if right. you make my health poorer I go to court and you pay me if I prove that's the point but if the government owns everything forests, lakes, roads plants so there's nobody to go to court against that's the problem um, I wouldn't, you know, go so far, you know, this uh, public property versus privately owned property. No, here we have, we're going to the, here is the rule of law. It has to be strict law. Mm -hmm. And so I wouldn't, um, I would say there are two major factors. Uh, one is mm -hmm. uh, ignorance of law. Mm -hmm. I mean, ignorance, not only ignorance, but uh, ignoring, mm -hmm. yeah, I would say better, ignoring the law and mm -hmm. total disrespect for law, mm -hmm. which we see in Belarus. Mm -hmm. Because they don't, I mean, if you take authorities mm -hmm. or those uh, bodies who are supposed to protect mm -hmm. the law, like police, mm -hmm. they violate it. They violate their own law. Mm -hmm. That's that's a problem. How they can be, you know, protectors of law if they violate their own law? I, to say nothing about some um, imaginable civilized mm -hmm. uh, law system. Mm -hmm. uh, so on the other side, there is uh, total unawareness or ignorance in this mm -hmm. case of population, which uh, does not um, create. Uh, uh, conditions for people demanding right. uh, this law to be implemented. Yeah, right. So if, because, you, for if example, you are a whistleblower, yes. if you are a whiplash, I, so you must have venues to go and appeal and uh, draw attention of the public and the authorities to these violations. Right. I'm the only person in this uh, micro region, as we say, in this district where mm -hmm. where I live in this uh, mm -hmm. apartment where this smoke is mm -hmm. going on, who is whistleblower because yep. you know I'm the only one who is concerned about this question. And you must have legal protection and you has, must have ways to appeal to the public to uh, and your right and your voice should be protected in the best way. Yes. Vlad, thank you for your input for the topic and uh, 
for your uh, concern of the environment and you've been uh, a whiplash and a uh, lone ranger against yeah. the government in so many cases so hail to your courage uh, let me remind you uh, well dear listeners that we are in uh, Primus Radio B for Belarus and uh, our major theme uh, today was Belarus as ecological danger zone as we uh, argue this is not that dangerous but uh, many cases the government and the population uh, treat environment with disrespect like trash and uh, in, in order to improve the situation we must all together uh, work hard on institutions on transparency on uh, the issue that will really make us to the top 30 of the world uh, stay with us uh, please send us your comments uh, pro uh, questions that you have uh, things that you'd like to uh, be covered on Belarus I'm sure that in the near future we'll be covering uh, some politics for you, because Belarus will be in the center of attention as we are in the heat of a presidential election campaign, which is getting nasty and nastier. But uh, it's predictable. I think that Vlad and I, we did not expect things to evolve in a different way. But uh, if we get more uh, active, if we got more um, educated, I think things would definitely be much better. Cheers, stay with us, goodbye. Yes, follow us, goodbye.